Hello lovelies, welcome to Nark Pre Formula. My name's Freedom. Thank you for joining me. Um, today's episode is Is the Narcissist Evolving? Um so back in 2005 when I first met my Narc ex-husband, um, no one was talking about narcissists. In 2010, however, the world had started to get a bit of a clue. Um, and searches for the word narcissist absolutely skyrocketed. So, how is the narcissist evolving? Well, let's face it, they've got access to the internet um, and they're self-absorbed enough to watch videos on themselves. <laughs> um, so, I've got eight points in the way that I see the narcissist has evolved over time. Um, you're going to want to stick around to the eighth point because it's kind of really weird slash interesting. So let's get into it, darlings. Number one. So they are evolving because they are becoming more covert. Um, and what I mean by this is, you know, the stereotypical narcissist is someone who's, you know, full of themselves, um, grandiose, you know, everyone thinks they can pick a narcissist. Um, but the ones that are, you know, uh, shy and you know accommodating and you know sweet and loving or attentive you know they're the ones that kind of slip under the radar so more and more narcissists are playing down aspects of their personality because let's face it it's not really a personality it's actually just you know it's a mask it's a performance so they're playing down aspects of themselves um, and this will tie into the other points. So I'll just say, we'll just leave that point there for now. So they're becoming more covert in their behavior. Number two, they are starting to use therapy more. And what I mean by this is a lot of them are using the tool of therapy to say, you know, oh, I'm a narcissist, but I'm in recovery. You know, like I'm getting help for it. Now, we all know that the vast majority of them actually aren't trying to get help or change because that is the nature of their personality disorder they don't think there's anything wrong with them but they are they are more and more as the rest of the world is catching on being forced into therapy by their wives um, by their workplaces you know and and so uh, quite a lot of them are actually going to therapy like I said um, to be able to say that they're going to therapy uh, and that they're you know in recovery so we actually feel sorry for them and also they're using that information that they're, that they're getting so that inside the information that they're getting from um, the therapists they're using that as a tool and a weapon um, against you know the people that love them so for example the narcissist is, is the type that will go to therapy and come out and say oh well my therapist told me that you're the problem that's the kind of triangulation you can expect from a narcissist. Or like I said, they sit in their therapy sessions, tell the, the therapist everything they want to hear, laughing at them the whole time. But like I said, it gives them that, um, you know, that appearance that they're actually doing something about the problem. But they're not because that's they don't see it as a problem. It's an illusion. That's just another mask, another performance on their behalf. All right, point three. So they are taking to social media as the experts, right? So they're literally, I'm seeing channels on YouTube where they're like, oh, hi, I'm a narcissist, right? And the thing is, what I'm noticing is they have a tendency to try and muddy the water a bit. Just when victims are actually getting clear, like people are actually getting real clarity around who they're involved with, what the nature of you know that relationship was, um, and they're getting super clear on it. I see these channels pop up and they all have the same kind of MO. They all are super flirty with their audience. They're all like, they think they're, they think they're super shit hot and sexy. Um, they're predominantly men. Unfortunately, we do have covert narcissists um, who are women who are running narcissism channels, but they're playing the victim. Anyhow, this is one of the ways that the narcissist is evolving. You know, they're learning to wear their narcissism as a pride, uh, you know, like a badge of honor. Like they're proud of being a narcissist. They think it makes them special. All right, number four. Um, the narcissist is evolving um, 
in this particular way. So what they will be doing is they will isolate you from any friends or family members who know anything about narcissism. And what they'll do, so they see that coming, like they see the red flag, they see it as a red flag to their, you know, it's going to cause problems for them and what they're trying to achieve. And so they say things like, she thinks everyone's a narcissist, right? That's a common line, you know, or she'll never get a man with an attitude like that. Now, what they're trying to do is, once again, this is the art of triangulation. They're trying to say, if you want to be like her and believe that I'm a narcissist, you're going to be seeing narcissists in every man you ever date, you know, and you'll end up alone. But that's not the fact. Like, the truth of the matter is, they are a narcissist. They know it, and they just don't want you to know it. You're not going to end up alone. You're going to end up being a lot happier and either in a healthy relationship with a healthy individual or um, happily single, knowing that at least you're not involved with a narcissist. All right, point five. So they will call you a narcissist um, first because they know what's coming. So one of the things that you will hear often on narcissism channels in particular is, you know, the fact that the narcissist will call you a narcissist. Right, so they're getting one step ahead of you. So they're calling you the narcissist first, right? Because then when you try and say, no, he's a narcissist, then they can say, look, it's the narcissist calling me a narcissist. <laughs> you know, it's this one step ahead. It's always just to gaslight and confuse us. This is why the most important thing is to get the hell away from these people because nobody's got the time for this. You know that that little meme ain't nobody got time for that right that's really that's the way it is who's got time for this all right number six um they are hiding amongst us in our facebook groups and online groups um, and they're pretending to be the victims right so this is how they're evolving so not only do they kind of somehow think they are the victims right so they're projecting all their stuff but they found a new audience so all these people are like oh you poor you oh i can't believe that that happened to you and you know and i'm hearing especially from the male narcissists i'm hearing a lot of um you know women can be narcissists too and yes that is true women absolutely can be narcissists too but the vast majority of narcissists um are not women they're men and it's quite often, um, quite often I will see them, uh, these male narcissists, in these groups and they feed off the group. So they put up these posts and they're, you know, this post of him being so good looking and single and alone and, you know, some sob story about how, you know, his partner just betrayed him or left him or whatever. And the thing that is fascinating is what I see with these little uh, posts and comments and um, you know fake victim narcissists is they don't really understand what narcissism is you know they're, that's why they're there in those groups they're there to get fuel and they're there to learn so when they post these little weird um, I'm the victim comments they don't realize that the symptoms aren't that of narcissistic abuse and so that people who know what narcissistic abuse looks like will kind of read it and go hmm but heaven help you if you try and point out that there's a narcissist in the Facebook, you know, on the online support groups, because it will cause absolute chaos trying to out them. All right. Number seven. Um, they are choosing easier victims. This is another way they're evolving. So they are choosing easier victims to keep to keep that that victim you know servicing all their needs essentially right so they've got someone who's going to cook for them clean for them sex them when they want sex you know sew their clothes if they need their clothes done run errands do everything for them right so and, and maybe even you know some of them are having their kids raised by these women um someone who will take their abuse whatever but they're not marrying so much anymore because that looks bad right it looks bad when you meet you know, Joe Blow and he's had six wives. You're like, oh, gee, that's unusual. Um, you know, because back in the day, uh, relationships, you know, most people had to get married to 
made their relationships legitimate. They couldn't just go around sleeping with everyone. Whereas times are changing and now narcissists are evolving. So they keep, um, they keep, you know, partners, wives, girlfriends, whatever. They have, you know, a variety of different supplies of um, fuel or supplies of fuel. None of them know each other <laughs> um, and they will get everything they want and he gets to kind of, you know, go from one to the other, triangulate. Um, he's always on the move, getting fuel everywhere, no loyalty to anyone. Uh, so it's just, it's, it's kind of, it goes hand in hand with what's going on with society in general, but that just works really well for the narcissist. All right, number eight. This is one that I was saying I think is really important. So the internet has become the narcissist's playground um, with all the dating sites and the apps. And there are a lot of, um, so there's the dating site, there's two things I want to say about the internet. There's the dating sites and the apps, right, where these men, um, like I said, as you know, my channel's for women, I don't have to keep repeating myself. Yes, there are female narcissists, but I'm not talking to males, I'm talking to women. So, um, so with these, you know, these online dating apps and, you know, Tinder and all the, those things, different sites and apps, Narcs having absolute field day. They can have 20 women on the go at once. No one knows anyone. They all think that they're having a real relationship with the narcissist and the narcissist is playing every single one of them and getting fuel, 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 fuel. And the other point is, and this is kind of funny, um, a lot of these narcissists are think they are MGTOWs. So if you don't know who the MGTOWs are, they're the men going their own way. Right, they're essentially men who, um, the vast majority of them are kind of super mis misogynistic. They hate women, and they um, they all get together in their little groups and talk continually about how much they hate women. Um, that seems to be the essential kind of common theme that runs through their little groups, and yet so many of these MGTOWs are involved online with multiple women because in their mind they don't think that this um that these online women are real you know so they're narcissists turning up in these MGTOW groups hating on women openly hating on women so they actually have a place where they can vent their hatred of women and talk about women and say things like you know um they use horrible phrases like oh pump and dump which is actually it's kind of interesting that is actually pump and dump is actually a crypto term um, but the MGTOWs have, uh, they've co-opted that particular phrase. So there's that and a few other just, just foul, just foul things that they say about women. Um, and so, you know, like I said, narcissists pretending to be MGTOWs, but still, um, engaging with women on the internet and somehow pretending to themselves that they're not really, uh, that they don't really need women, that they're men going their own way. All right, darlings, super weird behavior. But yes, the narcissists are definitely evolving. You need to be on your toes. You need to be smart. Uh, you need to watch out for the red flags and you really need to pay attention to how you feel, right? Because your body and your instincts and your intuition is what will keep you safe. All right, lovelies, thank you for listening. And um, yeah, look, I'm sorry also, just quickly, a quick apology. I'm super, super sorry that I haven't been online much. Um, it's hard. I'm an introverted extrovert. I have days where I really don't want to be putting my head on the camera. So um, at this point in time, I'm just going to try and do as many at least videos like this, where at least you know you have the audio, you can listen, you know, you all know what I look like, you don't need to see me. Um, you know, and then I'll try and do the best I can and actually get